we come together collectively and lift up the name above every name, it, it, come on, I'm going to start preaching. I ain't preaching in a few weeks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there's, there's something that happens in the spiritual. And, you know, that's why the attack was so strong. That's why they didn't want us doing what we're doing tonight, because the enemy knows this. And so uh, every Wednesday, just put it on your calendar, be in your place as we start 2021. Um, we are going to get together. We're going to worship. We're going to praise. We're going to lift the name of Jesus together. And then pastor is going to begin a series in the book of John. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, it's going to be dynamic as it always is. We're so blessed here with our pastor and his, his, uh, his ministry. And, um, and the first Sunday in, in January, remember that we have Kim Walker Smith coming back to lead worship. So invite your friends, invite your family, you know, and yeah, it's going to be powerful. We're also going to have baptisms uh, during that, uh, the second service on that day. And so if you have not been baptized, if God's been putting that in your heart, uh, it would be a perfect time to do that on the, I believe it's the third. And so I think that's all the announcements uh, for now. Take your Bibles with me to Luke chapter two. Luke chapter two, it's very good what God has given, I believe. So we're going to start reading in verse number eight. If you're there in your Bibles tonight, say amen. The Bible says, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round, uh, around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swallowing clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards man. I want to bring a message tonight entitled Joy to the World. Christmas is a magical time, especially when you're the parents of young children. They're experiencing a lot of this for the first time. And, and uh, the other, last week, um, you know, we, we put up the decorations and, you know, the kids are just in awe of all that's taking place right now. And my wife wanted to take uh, the kids to see Christmas lights, and she heard about on the boulevard how there was a drive through parade. And, and uh, I tried to go in the car. I had my mask on. I was in the car. <laughs> you know, I tried to go with them to, to see these uh, inside the car, of course, these, uh, these Christmas lights. And as we pulled up, uh, the line was a few miles back. And so I said, you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to make it, babe. <laughs> and so she took me back home, and, and they went, and, and uh, I wasn't feeling great at the time. So don't, don't, don't make fun of me or don't think I'm a bad human being, not, not in the spirit. I, I told my wife, I'm, I feel like the Grinch right now, you know? Any of you men like me, when you get sick, it's just like you're dying, right? Like you, you, my wife just has to, you know, nurse me and... And you know, that's what it is. And, and we milk it, don't we, man? <laughs> I milked it. But anyway, so they took me home and they went over to, to get in line and to wait to go through the drive through parade. And, and so I had a few moments of, you know, very rare moments of peace and quiet in the house to myself, you know. And um, I enjoyed them. And, and uh, so... But I heard, of course, as the garage door opened up and, and, and the kids come running in the house and I hear the little pitter-patter feet, you know, little kids, they, they sprint in the house and, and, uh, and my door, in, into my door comes in symphony, our four-year-old, and, and uh, she says, Dad, with all, you know, excitement and everything, she says, I, you are not Santa Claus. <laughs> that was her first, I saw Santa Claus tonight on the boulevard, the real Santa Claus. You are not Santa, Daddy. You see, because I've told my kids that I'm Santa. I'm the only fat person who's bringing you gifts. <laughs> Being honest. But she came in, in the room with so, ex so much excitement and exuberance of what she saw. 
that night, what she thought she saw anyways, let me tell you, sorry kids, that wasn't Santa on the boulevard, that was somebody's grandpa. They say, you're the Grinch, no, I'm just being real. <laughs> so, okay, we're, I'm going somewhere with this, okay? But I want you to see, uh, you know, when, when that happened, it just immediately, I just saw the joy, of course, that was on her face from what she had, had come to know, what she, in her mind, had, had seen that night. And as we come to Luke chapter 2, the second portion here, uh, we, we are in, the, of course, the, 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 the event of Christ coming to the earth. And, of course, God is in all the details, and he, he has Joseph and Mary go to Bethlehem, and as it was prophesied, and he used all these different circumstances to orchestrate them being there when it was time for Christ to be delivered. And we, we heard about that on Sunday, how she gave birth to the Savior. And may I say this, guys, the greatest event that, have, that has ever happened in history is the birth of Christ. And sometimes in these, you know, we get really comfortable and we get used to this season and, and you know, we get to be, you know, uh, you know, callous to the truth of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And I just want to, uh, to help you tonight to, to see it with fresh eyes. You see, God became flesh and he dwelt among us. The Bible says, Emmanuel, God with us. He was born, the, the one who created everything that we see, the one who, who, who spoke the world into existence, the one who in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, was born and in in, he was an infant, he was dependent. The one who, who was always and would ne never really had a beginning, he was from eternity past, he was born into this world. He put on flesh the, the, the magnificence of this. It is something to marvel. It changed the course of the world forever. The birth of Jesus is the greatest event of all time. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3 and verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. <laughs> it was the most, uh, the most significant thing that ever happened. And I want you to understand as we read in these verses, there's a few things that we can glean from uh, this account from Luke. And we see it now from the perspective of looking back towards it. But can you imagine being there that night? And the beautiful thing about it is that uh, we get a glimpse into this. You know, sometimes I think we take for granted what we have in our laps. The truth of the word of God, the, the, to see the eternal truths and, and to understand things that, that some of the most intellectual people in the world can't wrap their brain around and is, is right before us. And tonight we're going to look from the perspective of these shepherds, okay? The shepherds who are in the same country as we learned. And we, we see some very important truths. I want you to notice with me uh, that there should be, there's joy because of this, guys. Because Jesus came for all. Jesus came for all. I want you to understand what's taking place here. The Bible talks about that they were shepherds in the field, and, and these men were in the field at night, and, and these men would spend all night in the field protecting the flock. And I want you to understand something about these shepherds. They would have been the outcasts of that society. You see, they were ceremonially unclean because they were not able to go to the temple and observe of the, the ceremonies and, and to give sacrifice on a regular basis. It would be weeks in between the times that they would go to the temple and observe their faith. These men were practical, hardworking men, and they were men who uh, knew what it was to, to sacrifice, to provide for their family. They were regular old Joes like you and I. And I want you to understand, first of all, tonight that when Jesus came, he didn't come for the high and mighty, the rich and famous, and those who, who would be in palaces. He came for everyone. He came for the, the common man, for the lowly of the low. He came for you and I, and that's encouraging tonight. It should bring you joy tonight. He came for all. Now the angels bring this announcement to these shepherds, and it, it's, it's very telling that that these were the men who heard it first. You see, these men would have been raising lambs that were be used for sacrifice. These men would have been 
had little lambs that they were preparing to take to the temple so that they could, their blood could be shed and they would be sacrificed for temporary covering of sin. But as the angel came to them, he announced to them that the Lamb of God was born. The last and final needed sacrifice had finally come. The one who had been prophesied from eternity past, the one who had been pictured throughout the the history of Israel as we go back to the the Passover when they were in Egypt and God told them to to shed the blood of that innocent animal and, and to put it over the post. And when the death angel would come through that night, that he would pass over them when he saw the blood there. And it was all pictured uh, throughout the Bible when Rahab put the, the scarlet thread outside of her window and that the, the soldiers would know to save all those who were in the house when Noah got on the ark and he closed the door. God closed the door and, and all who were inside of the ark. There's a picture of salvation that God would provide from judgment that was, was taking place. And I'm telling you, all throughout Scripture from the very garden, God was preparing for this very moment when he would bring his son into the world. Oh, the majesty, and he brings the message to the lowly. He brings it to the shepherds, the outcasts, and the angel declares, he says, this is a, don't fear. This is, I bring you good news. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, we've heard a lot of bad news this year. We've been disappointed left and right. We've seen uh, a lot crumble around us, but I'm here tonight to encourage you because no matter what has taken place this year in 2020, this has still already taken place, that the Messiah has come and we are secure in him. And no matter what befalls us this side of eternity, if you're in Christ tonight, you're secure because the King has come and he has provided salvation for you. He's provided, he's building a home for you in a place where there's no tears where there's no death and there's no fear. Oh, my friends, tonight we should be encouraged. We should have joy in the storm. These shepherds, they, they, had it, they had it hard. This time in Israel was not a good time. They were under Roman rule. Unemployment was hot. It, it was uh, the, the spiritual climate was not good. I mean, so much was going wrong. But in the midst of that, God showed up. God was made flesh. See, I want you to understand tonight, children and, and adults, and Christmas is a wonderful time where we, we, we are reminded that this season is in celebration of his presence. Not present, <laughs> but his presence This is what Christmas is about, that God was among us. You see, this good news, it was was received by the shepherds, and we'll see in just a moment. And some people don't receive the good news of the coming of Jesus with humility. And so it causes them to respond in hostility. We saw that, of course, when Herod heard of him, that a king was born and, and what he sought to do. And we saw it. When the religious leaders, of course, later were confronted with the truth that Jesus was Messiah and, and how they, re, they responded in hostility. And, and my friends, um, the, the truth of the message that the shepherds re- received that night, it will either soften a person or it will harden them. And I've seen it happen. And I hope tonight, if you're under the sound of, of, of my voice and you're watching uh, on live stream or somewhere tonight in the world, that you have received the good news that God has come into the world. Jesus has come and he wants to be your savior. He came for all. He came to save. That should bring joy tonight. I want you to see this with me in verse number 11. The Bible says, The angel continues the message and he says, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. A Savior. Oh, this morning at prayer, I was just I was just meditating on the fact that he's my Savior. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ears, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. He's my savior. It's personal, guys. You see, he didn't come to, to, to live in a secluded palace and to be worshiped and served, even though he would be, have been worthy of all that. 
He came to be a personal savior. He was among the people. He came and he was born in, in a manger. You see, there, were no, there was no room for him in the end. And, in the end, and, and he was uh, not received in, uh, when he came into the world. But he, he was born in such a lowly manner to, to picture how he would live and what he would accomplish with his life. And my friends, I hope you understand tonight that this baby that we celebrate, this one whom we sing about, oh, he is the savior. He came to save. It was his purpose. He was born in Bethlehem, the city of David. The city of David is also known as the house of bread. The bread of life was born in the house of bread, and he would come. It was prophesied in Micah 5, the very location of his birth. It says, but you, Bethlehem, Euphrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth uh, to me the one to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from old, are from everlasting. You see, God didn't want any doubt in the world of who his son would be who the Savior was. And I want you to understand something about his, his coming and, and what the angel says. He said, is there's born a Savior. I want you to understand Jesus was born to die. He was born to die. And that seems to be a message that is, you know, the world doesn't like that message, but he was born as a sacrifice. As I mentioned, those shepherds who were hearing this, they would have been very familiar with what sacrifices were. Those lambs, the purpose of many of those lambs were to, were to die. And it's pictured in when Jesus was born, the Bible says that he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. He was wrapped in burial clothes. Little strips of fabric, they wrapped the little baby Jesus in. And there was a picture there that this baby would be the sacrifice for sin. He would be the final sacrifice for sin. The greatest gift ever given was wrapped in burial rags. Let that hit you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The greatest gift. And he wrapped him in, in burial clothes and he put him in a manger in a, in a barn where livestock were. And it was a picture of what he had come to do. He didn't come so that he could set his kingdom up for the first time. He is coming back to do that. But let me tell you, he came to sacrifice, to shed his blood for you and for me, for our sin. He came to be our savior. You know, when we hear the, about a savior, I think, you know, in generations past, people had more of a grip, a grip on the significance of a savior because they had more of a grip on the, the ugliness of sin, the, the, the penalty for sin. In our day, sin is being celebrated. Sin is being promoted. We've become desensitized to sin. But let me tell you something. Sin is serious to God. It was so serious that Jesus had to come. He had to come to die for your sin and for my sin. You see, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was for forgiveness. So God sent us a savior. I'm telling you, you can live a perfect life and you live in the hills of Beverly Hills. You can, you can live uh, in the lap of luxury and you die with your sin not forgiven. And the moment you die outside of Christ, you will know. What profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? The significance of the Savior. See, forgiveness was the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performed. It, is the, it meets the greatest need of every man, woman, boy, or girl. It costs the greatest price, his very life. And it brings the greatest blessing and the most lasting results. A few weeks ago, I was... I was preaching a, a memorial for a 32-year-old woman who uh, passed away unexpectedly, leaving a, a husband and two little boys. They had started coming to our church during Jet Hawks, and, and it, was, uh, it was just a heartbreaking situation. And the husband had come a few weeks prior and had been baptized. She was going to be there to be baptized as well, but the boys weren't doing well. And, and as... Um, I preached that funeral, 
uh, it was just evident all in the preparation leading up to that and the service too. As I was around this, this young man who had just lost his wife, the peace of God was, was over him. He told me why he had such peace, why he, he had such strength from God during this season, difficult season on top of everything that's happened in this year. He said because months prior to his wife's going to eternity, God had put it on his heart to begin to study the Bible with her, to teach her the word of God, to make sure that she knew Christ. And she had come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ over those weeks. And she was coming to make her faith public. And then God, but God saw fit to call her home before that. And she told me the story of the last Bible study that they had together, how he had mentioned how, you know, you've probably heard how people who have a near-death experience how they see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and how um, she, uh, she, she said something to him like, well, I heard if you see the light, you should run away. And he said, no. He said, if you see the light, run to it because Jesus is at the end of that light. And as he shared this with me, I just got, you know, chills all over my body and just, just it was just, just a reminder, a reinforcement as I saw the peace of God in his life. Because let me tell you guys, eternity is real. Heaven is real. Jesus is real. And we're all closer to eternity than we think we are. And tonight, because God has sent a savior, we have hope, we have peace within. Because of that relationship, because of him coming, we have the assurance of eternity in heaven. And that should bring us joy tonight that we have a savior. The Bible tells us that we can have that assurance. The Bible says, he that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son hath not life. And tonight, if you're here and you're searching, you're not sure about who you, what you believe about this Jesus that we're talking about, who we're singing about, let me tell you, he is a savior. He loves you. He came to die for your sin. He wants that relationship with you. He's gone to the fullest extent to provide a way. And tonight, you, the greatest gift that you could ever receive is Jesus, is Jesus. He would save us from our sin. I want you to understand it was, it was what he was, his purpose, his name, guys. You know what the name Jesus means? It means Yeshua saves or Yahweh saves. That's what Jesus means. It's the New Testament translation of, of Yeshua or Joshua. And it means save. God saves. His, you know, Christ is not his last name. It's a title. You see, Christ means he is Messiah. He is the anointed one. The one and only son of God. I want you to understand there is only one way to heaven. There's only one who can provide for forgiveness. There's only one true Savior, and it's Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that tonight. Oh, isn't it significant that he came? Oh, I think sometimes we forget. We forget how important it was that he came. You see, Jesus was born into a world much like ours. It was wars, rumors of wars, turmoil. Nations were at odds. The economy wasn't great. But yet, the angels still said to these shepherds, hey, I have some good news that should bring you joy because it supersedes this. The greatest kingdoms in the world have a shelf life. You understand that? <laughs> I'm not saying we don't fight. I'm not saying we don't pray. But I'm telling you, if your hope is wrapped up in this, you'll be, you'll be disappointed. My hope tonight, you know, I was encouraged. I was, I was a little discouraged over the last few weeks not being with you guys and, and hearing the news and seeing. I was a little discouraged. I was down. You know, pastors, we get down. We, we see the direction that we're heading, and, and it's, it's very concerning. But, but at the end of the day, I had to put my eyes back on Jesus. I had to turn my eyes back on Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, my friends, he's, he's our, he is our salvation. He is our hope. He is our future. He is, he is everything. Mm. 
I was only supposed to preach about 20 minutes tonight, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I can keep going. But I want you to understand these shepherds, as they heard the message of a Savior being born, as they heard who it was, they would have known who Christ was. The Messiah is here. The Lord, uh, he, God in the flesh is here. And, and the angels told them, hey, this is how you'll know who he is. He, he'll be wrapped in these swallowing clothes. And suddenly the Bible says there was a, with that angel, there was a host of the heavenly host. And they begin to worship. And the song that they sang is a song that we should sing, not just at Christmas, but throughout our lives. And I want you to see, it says glory, verse 14, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. You see, I want you to understand something. Jesus came for those other reasons I mentioned, and they are important, but Jesus also came for the glory of God. I want you to understand something. God is concerned with his glory. He wants his, he is due his glory. He will not share his glory with anyone else. I, I was, you know, watching, of course, uh, the NBA uh, this, this last few months. And, you know, of course, when uh, the, the Lakers won, and I was, I was happy about that. I'm a Lakers fan. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, they were interviewing LeBron James, and he said, hey, I want my respect. You know, we won this championship. He, he wants to bask in the glory of, of his accomplishment. And, and I didn't like that. You know, I didn't like the, the arrogance of that statement. And, and, and uh, the, doesn't he not know that if he were bit by the wrong mosquito, that that would be the end of Le, the, the great, big, strong fast from LeBron James and, and, and the brevity of our lives. But let me tell you something. When it comes to glo the glory of God, I'm telling you, he's the only one who is due glory. He's the only one who we should worship. He's the only one who we should exalt. Exalt. He's the only one who we should live for, his glory and his glory alone. And the angels were leading these shepherds to understand, hey, when you get there, when you see this babe, it will be the greatest thing that your eyes have ever behold. And what you need to do and what they did and what the wise men did when they came into the presence of Jesus is they bowed down and they worshiped the baby. They bowed down and they gave glory to God. They bowed down before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And tonight, I'm telling you, if you just got that in your heart that you bow down before Jesus there will be much more joy in this season for you because I'm telling you God does something in the heart of a person who gives him his glory thank you Lord give him his glory he said glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Jesus, he was come to bring peace, not to the world in the way that we think, but he came to bring inner peace, peace to the hearts of men. I've seen it. I've seen people who live in multi-million dollar homes and they have everything the world says should make them happy, but they have no peace. You can't put a price tag on peace. But Jesus came to bring peace because he would reconcile a, a sinful man to his maker, to his Lord. And the greatest need this hour is for us to go forth with that message. For us to live in the, in the, in the hope and the joy that comes from the truth of a relationship with God. Those shepherds, when they heard the message, they said, let us go see this thing. They received the message. And they went themselves. They made haste, the Bible says, to, to go and find Jesus. And when they came, they saw Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby Jesus laying in the manger. And the Bible says that when they had seen it, they went and they made known. They published throughout the country what they had seen and what they were told by the angels. Oh, never before in the history of our country was it more needed that we, as God's people, would be going out with the message of hope of Jesus, a Savior, has come. Never before, guys. I can't emphasize it enough. What your coworkers, what your neighbors need, they're, they're all wrapped up in fear. I was out today, you know, just grabbing a few last-minute things. And you guys like me, you always wait till the last minute, and you always hate yourself for it. <laughs> that was me today. And um, 
people are just afraid. You just see, people won't even look you in the eye. Oh my goodness, you could cut the tension with a knife. And what we've got to ask God for is opportunities to say to someone, hey, I got some good news. Best news. Jesus loves you. He wants you. You don't have to fear death. You want to, you want to know how you don't have to fear death? Let me tell you. Larry King was interviewed by Barbara Walters back in 2006. And, of course, he was still at the height of his, his fame and his uh, fortune. And, and he was asked by Barbara, what is your greatest fear? He said, oh, that's easy. Death. And um, Barbara, Barbara followed up with the question, do you, do you believe in God? And, um, oh, the world is so different now. <laughs> you don't see interviews like this. But anyways, um, he said, well, I'm an agnostic, so I'm, I'm really not sure. I, 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 I have doubts. I have fear. And um, I want you to understand something. Because Jesus came, there is, there is a way to never have to fear death. To never have to live with this big question mark. What happens after I die? Oh, the greatest question of all eternity has been answered by this baby. <laughs> I'm so thankful for him. I could tell my kids and I'd tell them, Jesus loves you. He, he died for you. He, he wants that relationship with you. You don't have to fear anything or anyone because Jesus is here and let me, let me encourage you tonight, guys. The gift of Christ is an all-encompassing gift. It, it covers us through this life and into the next. And find joy in that, guys. Find joy in that. No matter what the circumstances, we don't know what next year holds. We don't know what next hour holds. But we know who holds tomorrow. Jesus Joy to the world. I'm, I'm going to stop there. The Lord has come. Let's remember that this season. I'm going to ask the worship team to come as we prepare to worship him some more. As we worship him, let us, from hearts of gratitude, let us, let us just exalt him like the angels did. Let us tell our children of it. I want to encourage you parents, you know, before you open presents, before you, you have your other times of enjoyment with your family, take some time to, to, to read maybe Luke 2 to your children and, 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 sh and tell them of this. Remind them and, and, and reinforce the, the reason for this season. All right? All right, let's, as they come, we're going to pray. Tonight, the altar's open. If, if, if God has done anything in your heart, you are welcome to come. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and your, your love and coming. You are the greatest gift of all time. And Lord, those of us tonight in here who have received you, we are of, of all people the most blessed. Remind us of that, Lord, when the little trivial things in life get under our skin. When the big tragic things happen, remind us that our hope is in you. And Lord, I just ask that tonight you would just continue this atmosphere of worship or that we would leave here encouraged, that we would go out like the shepherds did and make you famous <laughs> and spread the good news of glad tidings that should be great joy. That's for all men who will receive you. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.